It's Wednesday on our live audience show. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hi, ladies. Hi, Mariah. Nima in the building. Yo, yo, yo. How so is our baby doing? Our daughter. Exactly, my son. I'll be your son. So I want to shout out to all the husbands out there doing the same work. Amazingly, this time I didn't believe it. My husband has been fully, on fully ground. on ground, involved in nursing my son. Uh, so I was able to come to work on Monday, and he was in the hospital. He was there when all the, all the magic was being done, the crying, and he put up with it, stayed with the boy, calmed him down till I got there. And every time I have to call him, come and do something. And I'm wondering, he used to be the norm, but you know, because you know, you can, I like to rely on people that are reliable. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I know that he says you, you can overdo, but well, he, she just does because he's, he's coping fine. Okay. He. Who is talking about? You're talking about the baby that is in the hospital. He's the he now. You can't oh, so say she. I keep thinking he's, 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 he's fine. Okay, okay, okay. He's the both he's. Oh no wonder your husband is out there. Okay, now I can make the connection. Your guy him run, eh? Him run is your guy. Him run is make some lovely, you know. What is that? He's doing his work. What is that? I beg, give that matter. Rob is back for him. We understand. We are from this area. Oh, you're giving me what I'm feeling. You don't mind this. Eh, Mariamo, how you doing? I'm doing. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's your your new very, okay, okay. Thank you. I get it all the time. My husband calls me Marie sometimes. I hear Maria more. Yeah, yeah. I hear every, you, you call me him him, Maria more. Is you. Yeah. You don't want How to answer Maria Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing great. I want to also send a shout out to a little girl. She's four year. She's a four year old girl. She um got um, burnt. So she's in the hospital. hospital. Yeah, wow. she's in my mom's ward in the hospital. And Aww. she's really a chatty little girl. So my mom put Aww. me on the phone with her yesterday and we talked and I said I was going to send a shout out Aww. to her. Ruth yeah. Kennan is her name. Ruth so I'm wishing just, you all, all yes, just, all the way in just. So I'm wishing you all the best, yes, and all the healing. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> How are you doing, Obeya I've been doing great. Let me not use the word amazing. They've been yabbing me. Is that the only word she knows? But I like, I do amazing, so I can talk <laughs> about it. I'm amazing. It's and such an American word, God. though. You know, Americans say amazing for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing and an super. American. That's an American woman right there. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, then? So I'm doing great. Um, I've spent the last, since Sunday, I didn't leave my house after church. I've been indoors reading. I stumbled upon this book, The Heart of Souls, by Gary Dukav. It was recommended by Oprah, and it's been mind-blowing for me. I'm just realizing that everything that's happening here is because we are in a school, the Earth School. So we actually do not have enemies, but we have our classmates in the school. So everything that comes your way is to help uplift you to the next level. So my outlook on life just what changed. What is, what is, what is, and I just so come up with all sorts of terms. No, I just, no, what's that this day? has worked. You're yeah, in a classroom. This has please. worked. Opera has been using it. In for, America, not yeah. in Nigeria, no, please. come on. Life is life everywhere. Exactly. So I'm saying this is life, and then everybody has an interpretation yeah. of that life. And this so. is actually working for, for me. You. I am seeing the results already. In two days. In, in two, days. two days, I'm telling well you. Well done. My right. just changed. And I will still read that book till I This is what happened when all these motivational speakers always give us all these things. Oh, they, they read all the books in the world, they come and tell us, and they are not practicing any no, of no, this. No, no, How no, that you're practicing I your own? I am practicing my own. And don't Fantastic. worry, you will see the results here. Don't worry. Just right. chill. Just chill. Well, <laughs> no, we don't buy books. We used to borrow books. Anyways, me, I entered the kitchen yesterday. I was, in the whole, I was, I was at home all through yesterday. Yeah. Okay. I cooked up a storm. Oh like, my God. When I, said the, I felt proud, you know? Uh -huh. So I was entered the kitchen. I cooked up. Hmm. I was entered the kitchen. I said, I said, I said, I said what, what do you even have? I said, I have this, I have that. I can't look what you feel like because you're around today. I have chicken, do you have the four here? I have oh a bonnet. Like, I was really good. Food. Just, for, just for MIL to come in. Ah, oh, baby, I'll find you. I'm like, no, don't push, it. It <laughs> don't push it. Don't push it, mommy. Don't push it. Finished <laughs> cooking. Father, the help is not pounding anywhere here. I bought a cup. You eat it with the food. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because I am, what? Like, I have been here for five hours cooking. Someone's asking when you are at 99 hours. I'm seriously trying to buy a pounder. I will give you one. She brought one to the house. I'll give it to you. Come on, that's me. The 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 goon, the kodo. Oh my 
Ouchi, they will use it to escort you to your husband's house. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, no, the, the local it. one. I like we this. call it Odo. No, we have right. the one you stand, Odo. the double-sided piece. We just there in my house, in my kitchen, gathering dust. If you want it, please come and collect. No, we have, we have. Thank you. Yeah, gathering <laughs> dust. I have never used it. All right. Anyway, let's go on a break. It's Tuesday, right? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Right, so policy is heated, so we're going to take the paper just very gently and tread carefully. Hmm. The punch. EFCC sets up special team to grill Fayoshi over corruption charges. Mm -hmm. Governor slams 20 billion naira suit on anti graft agency. Buhari meets Amoso as APC battles post primary crisis. Headsman attacks don't play with people's lives. I find it very cautious, Tinabu. Picture here of um, workers at the National Assembly protesting the payments of their allowances. Shell MD, two others jailed for disobeying court order. APC mock Saraki over failed presidential bid. Nigeria's economy performing poorly, says IMF. Nigeria needs a president who understands economy, says Obasanjo. Mm -hmm. Scammers using Baba uh, Salah's um, death to make money, says family. Mm -hmm. All right, so here. Yeah, yeah, happy. Um, uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo was at a meeting, four square church meeting. There was a lecture and he was speaking yeah. about uh, how our country needs a president who is well versed in the economy to be able to, that's the sort of person that we need and anyone who can do that would not be able to, you know, to help our country. So he says that he got this advice from his friend Helmut Schmidt, um, the former Vice Chancellor of Germany. So. Um, I guess it's a welcome idea. Let me quickly tag that along is a, a long article statement saying that, you know, the, the APC are afraid of him <coughs> and that they are afraid because, you know, he's a, he's a strong candidate, that what they need now is to be creative in, in job uh, creation, creation because a lot of, we have about 11 million um, unemployed youth. Okay. They should be creating jobs, 11 thousand ah. jobs per year if it's possible so he also that's what they're looking at okay so maybe about sanjo and the these people ah, there's talking. a marriage of sorts <laughs> okay he was also yeah. talking yeah. about uh, he mentioned that even jesus christ knew the economy who Obasanjo in his speech <laughs> knew the economy and that was why he was able to yeah. you know, is it help. Theologian, is yes. It? Yeah. So but okay. the thing so, for me is I, I think we should um it's not just about lip service. We are looking out for mm -hmm. leaders right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that we are selecting. Let's so, move on yeah. to the nation Buhari article camp step up attacks over twenty nineteen poll. National Assembly aids demand payment of salaries and allowances. Summit recommends commission to stop farmers and headers clashes. Ex-Airways staff to get $22.6 billion next week. Afeni Ferry leaders visit Obasanjo over poll. And Buhari seeks approval for $2.79 billion euro bond. Okay, so the, but the oh. National Assembly officers are protesting mm. non-payment of their allowances. <laughs> Two months, so a whole two months. So allowances. I mean, Let's I don't clear. understand. And the people that they brought to they come are protest, they are able-bodied people. I'm they say they are dying of hunger. I'm wondering mm. to myself. Mm. And they look so, so well fed. These are they, they, they. I mean, and I. I, 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 I need someone to explain what they are owing yeah. their allowances from since this uh, assembly started. They've not paid them their duty to allowance. So that's, that's what I read. Though. I read it was only two months. They are owing so. them two months basic salary. The, okay. the but normal salary. But the duty to allowances is since what the 8th assembly to started. So I need someone to tell Explain me that. duty to, to allowance. allowance. What so is when that they mean? go on tour yeah. based on Because these work. people are obviously not hungry, but they are owing them allowance. Mm. So, so just as they are owing ASU allowance. Yeah. Just as they are owing doctors allowance. But just but as, as they are owing nurses. Nurses. But lawyer, the is, this, is that the, uh, always the first thing to do? To so just protest. go and protest? Is there a privilege to do? In the, in the like National AC. Assembly chambers, like you stay inside. Like yeah, so why are they Media is always in, in yeah. attendance. Okay. So why don't you just have a talk, like a 
press conference. No, 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 no. no, no, no. The, the, the people yielding. they work with are legislators. They don't pay them salaries. Yes. So. But yeah, I can't remember the figures. I know the National Assembly has a large chunk oh, yeah. of budget. Very, very large budget. So I'm wondering why would they be owing, owing these people? Why Anyways, would they be owing their aids? Good news to the airways officers, uh, yeah. staff. They're going to be getting yes. money paid. Our new finance minister has approved yes. the money. 22.6 billion will be going out this week for them. Yes. Mm. So you have it's to come with your national week. ID cards next, next Monday. Monday. Next Monday. Yes. Yes. National ID card, your passport photographs, evidence of the word that okay. used to work Isn't there. Because yes, I've been getting message. I've been seeing messages on social media. How parents have, you know, kids are saying my parents called me to say then I've been. No, uh, no, no, they're doing assessments and, you know, okay. um, what do they call it? Ratification. Mm -hmm. to, uh, verification. To, okay. Verification, yes. yeah. Yes, and so it's no, going to be happening in the three Monday. hubs the yeah. Inugu, Kanu, Kanu, and Lagos. Uh, Lagos. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well yeah. done. All right. Moving on now to Vanguard National Assembly leadership. Saraki Dogara stay as APC PDP senators opt for truce. APC primaries aspirants in last minute rush to beat deadline. 2019, PDP zoned VP slot to Southeast, says Benobi. Why Atiku must pick vice president from Southwest to says a chief thing. APC attacks Araki over performance at PDP conven convention. Uh, PDP dumps Tambual as Tokoto governor candidate. Lagos APC primaries, Obakiolu, Obanikoro sons clinch reps tickets. Nigeria's economy doing poorly, says IMF. Mm. Uh, so I'm happy that the National Assembly have agreed to um, to agree on some kind of truce. You know, they have agreed that the National Assembly is not a place for war. They're not going to be fighting, mm -hmm. seen as constantly being in, in 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 a state of unrest and all that. That they're going to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So they've agreed. Both parties. I said the I think the pre the National Assembly said they will support the presidency in whatever they need them to do. And presidency said also they're not going to try to push an impeachment right now because obviously the PDP the would definitely it. resist it in every single way. So yeah. I, I like that they are having a proper conversation, yeah, they had it too, which is uh, good. It's our uh, interest that. It's yeah, not interesting. So and now, they will, now, now they will have time to, you know, concentrate on our own interests and our policy. Don't, 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 don't mean, be too happy because there's a pending, the pending um, 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 things that the president has sent to the National Assembly, part of which bills. is the INEC, the bills, bills, that bills have been sent. So that's what they should be working on right now. Mm. So our personal ones, I don't think yeah, this that's year. That's our interest and in the bills now. That's interest. what interests us. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what should I say? Are we taking in Vanguard? Legal politics, very interesting. Yes, Obanikoro. Yes, Obanikoro. His name is Obama. Uh, Obama, Obama Akilu. Uh, Akilu, yes. When was he born? He'll when be representing. He no, he has a Yoruba name. Okay. Kayode, I think. Obama Kayode. Akilu. Maybe that's his nickname, He'll Obama. Because be when did we know Obama? It was not yeah, just a few years exactly. ago. Exactly. <laughs> when did they name him? <laughs> so he'll be representing Lagos in the House of Reps himself and uh, Nobani Kuro's son. And um, the Lagos politics, Oluremi Tinumbu, uh, what's his name? Uh, this guy, Bayo Oshinowo, beat Ashafao. Oh, Oshinowo beat Ashafao. That was the interesting part. That was the interesting part. I don't understand how it happened. But the um, chairman of APC in Lagos has said that's the verified, original, authentic list hmm. of how the policy is. But I thought they said it was, it was disqualified at some point. The Oshinawa. Oshinawa guy. Anyway, no, no, let's not get into the, the drama. They put, did post um, governorship. Let's move on oh, before you start getting calls. Moving on to Nigerian Tribune. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria needs a leader who understands the economy. This is a on job. Mm -hmm. Facebook to work with Nigeria to curb fake news. That's mm -hmm. from our Minister of uh, Information okay. and Culture, Lai yeah. Mohamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> APC to Fayoshi, you are not wanted. Fayoshi, my ekiti person, says, APC, my foot. Kilonjebe. He didn't say Kilonjebe, I added that one, I just see. <laughs> Alleged corruption. Cut other service of processes on Ashomali and AFCC. Leadership tussle, APC, PDP, senators strike peace deal at closed session. Remember I mentioned yesterday that I am married to an Ikiti man. Okay. They don't quickly they, uh, throw in the towel like that. Like if, you are, if they are very stubborn. Okay. So me, I don't I see if I was going to APC. And I said it here, APC my foot. Because the APC in Ikiti, I know Ikiti was telling him that we don't want you, we don't even think, but before you start coming to APC, finish up your political, your corruption charges. Personal opinion. Your personal opinion. Uh, uh, Fayoshi, if he doesn't stay... In governor Fayoshi, he's still for governor. Okay. Governor, Your Excellency. Yes. Fayoshi, if he's, <laughs> if he's still want to be relevant in, in, in politics in Nigeria, you better stay, stay on with the PDP or 
stay with a strong party opposition. opposition. Mm. Yes. No way. The so minister Facebook, of information. He himself, as a human being, is opposition enough. <laughs> Doesn't need another <laughs> party. <laughs> 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 so it's all right. Opposition. You're going to yeah, say. The minister of information. Yes, Alajilai like Mohammed. Yes. Said that um, there's a he actually said this when he visited Dark Communications yesterday, and he was saying that there's a collaboration about to happen between Facebook and the federal government to curb fake news. Mm -hmm. So, and um, you know, the, the, he knows that everything is not going to yield immediately, but the process is ongoing. And people mm. according to him, it started sometime in July, and the idea really is to help them to understand. Well, how fake news is generated and stop it from the moment it's being generated. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a major issue for the federal government. Hate speech, fake news, that's and the most Facebook important thing, obviously, right now to mm. that ministry. And Facebook, too. It's, and it's very important to Facebook. Facebook have, have been leading this campaign about, especially as it happened in the politics in America. So, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, can we there. breeze through this day very quickly? Buhari ties balance of Paris Club refund to payment of salaries. Basson John, Nigeria needs a president who understands the economy. Oh, I was going to say something that um, I think APC replied, uh, article was saying that, that he has, he's leaning on his, um, the, um, the successes of um, the former president, Basson Job, that he was saying that he created X amount of jobs. I think he, he grew the GSM from 50,000 users to 100 million users. So, oh God, yeah, those are achievements of the former administration, not your own personal achievements. Ew. But see, I mean, that's just what, Chimek, that was the jab yeah. that APC threw at him. But okay. they're throwing jabs at each other. Yes. Obviously, it's expected. I mean, this is that it's too strong. I expect I uh, to reply, though, on his personal achievements. And he has a lot. You should talk about His personal yes. achievements. Yes, he has yeah. a lot, I know. Yeah. As a businessman. Yes, yes. 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 APC yeah, too has their own achievements, <laughs> according to them. Yeah, as in, a political party. According to them, as a political party. Let's go on a break. <laughs> when we come back to commemorate today, which is World Mental Health Day, we'll have a chat with a woman we love, whom we appreciate later on as uh, Mrs. Mutukwe Ozuela. Stay with us, we'll be right back. So today's World Health, World Mental Health Day. A lot of people in Nigeria are suffering from mental health, and many of them are dep depressed due to addiction of post-traumatic stress disorder, which may, on the long run, lead to suicide. It claims about 1.5 million Nigerians, according to reports. We have on the phone with us a Nigerian journalist and founder H and N Africa, Kemi Olunloya. Welcome to the show, madam. Thanks for having me, Mariah. Hi, good Kemi. Morning, ladies. Very good morning. Good, good to have you on the show. So, Kemi, I know a lot of people know that you have um, post-traumatic stress disorder because you say it a lot on, on your on your online platform. How yeah. has that been? How did it start? How has that been? And have you gotten any support from the government to help you in that process? Well, the government hasn't helped me. Okay. How did you? Start? I don't want to go into personal. I'm talking about. Government as regards the PST, the, 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 the issue of post-traumatic stress. Do, you have, is there, and do we have hospitals here in Nigeria that have been able to um, assist you through that process? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes very clearly. Can. Okay, this is what's going on. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not just something that Kemi Olunlayer alone has. A whole lot of people have this thing. 1.5 million Nigerians have PTSD. I want people to go and search PTSD and see what it is. In America, it has caused people who have PTSD to actually go to workplaces, army barracks, and kill lots of people. People are seen with PTSD. They see them as people that went to war and they came back. They've always associated it with war in America. Well, in Nigeria, it's called post-traumatic stress disorder, and it has to do with a flashback of traumatic events in your life. Now, most people know I was detained in Port Harcourt Prison. The experience I had in prison was what really brought me to that diagnosis, but I've had a lot of traumatic events in the past, which it now brought out. Like, for example, I had second degree burns to my entire face in 1984. Many people don't know. I remember that experience, an accident in the chemistry lab. I had the incident on Ikoro Road in 1978 during the Ali Moscow riot when, we, right. when our car was attacked. I was stripped naked on Ikorodu Road, and I was attacked, and people rescued me. Those kind of traumatic events, okay, now came back with this new one 
the PTSD. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You're in fear. You are suicidal. When right. you're suicidal, let me pause you for a second, yourself. Femi, because yesterday, mm -hmm. let me tell, let me pause for a quick second, because yesterday we actually had a guest who is doing a lot in helping people out there, and people don't. People don't understand the need to help people going through these types of disorders. So I don't want us to go too personal, but I want to know exactly yeah. how you've been able to engage the, the, uh, let the hospitals, let me not use government now, the hospitals in mm -hmm. Nigeria to help okay. manage that situation. That's, what I, that's really what I want to know. Very, very good question. The mental health system in Nigeria is there. The mental health system in Nigeria is there. We have the money. What we want the government to do is to help people. And we want the people to get help. If you don't get help, you're not going to get better. Okay. We're finding a lot of people who have the stigma. The stigma, I'm okay. scared to go and get help. They'll think I'm crazy. They'll think I'm mad. They'll think yes, I'm so stupid. Like the stigma has to end. The All government right, can put that out. Point taken. Point taken. I, I just want us to be able to help Nigerians with this condition because it takes a lot of courage for someone to come out and say, this is what I'm I dealing have. with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So please help us understand and help the viewers understand. What are the di what, how did you get to the, get this diagnosis? What are the signs that you that your doctor saw and said you're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder? Because a lot of Nigerians deal with these things on a daily and you know they just keep moving on. Help yes. Nigerians understand when it's a serious situation. What was yes. the diagnosis like? Okay, Nima, the way they saw mine was because I was angry a lot. PTSD's main symptom is fight or flight. If you don't fight somebody, you're going to flight. Flight means run away. So even in my house, when my mother says something and I'm not you know, happy with it, I either fight her or just leave the house. Fight or flight. I have hit people. I've slapped somebody on the street at an ATM. I've become very angry at ordinary people. I walk into the bank screaming to the top of my voice. That's you know, so those are the things. But the PTSD that we want to really get into in Nigeria is the people who have suffered from the insurgency. The kind of PTSD, the people who have suffered from the insurgency, the herdsmen attacked, the houses, the people killed. The they girls. all need help. And that's right. where our government has to start okay. looking Thank at you very PTSD. Much, yeah. okay. One more so, um, so I wanted to say, um, sorry, Mir. Um, mm -hmm. the, there's a stigma attached to anybody mentioning mental illness. When we hear mental illness, we just refer to the person to Yaba, the person needs to go there, the person is actually mad. How do we help people deal with the stigma so that more people can come out to say, this is the problem I have and get solutions? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, what, this is what I want to do, and this is why I called Moriah this morning. As a public figure, I think I can get it out. In America, public figures come out. In Nigeria, nobody does such. As a public figure, an outspoken media personality and a pharmacist, I give drugs to these people for years, and I'm suffering it too. I have anxiety. I've had depression. Okay, and I've had suicidal thoughts. Now, I'm in PTSD recovery. And as a public figure, I will go out and do talks, seminars, schools, everywhere. Because people do say to me on social media, when I get really controversial on my posts, can you go and take your medicines? This woman is mad. She's crazy. Mm -hmm. Little do they know that. I'm actually in that form in some areas. So I will come out, and I want more public figures to come out, not just celebrities and all that. Right. Politicians, okay. different right. people. Thank you. One Suicide more question. Has no One faith. more question, right. Miss Lawyer. Thank you so much, you know, for sharing your story with us. But then we also have a group of people who, right now, are just um, what would I say now? They are they're not they're not suffering any mental issues right now. But mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had a talk where people, uh, someone has taught, uh, talked about pr protecting yourself and in s protecting yourself from getting to that position, you know, to getting those issues. What are the things that we can do as people to just protect ourselves, you know, protect our mental health? Yeah. Yeah, so that you do not get to a point where you're suffering post-traumatic stress mm. disorder. Is there anything? Okay. Now, first of all, anyone with children, I ask them to speak to their children about sadness. If you have teenagers, they're on social media all day. If they don't get followers on social media or somebody comments and abuses them on Facebook, they attack back. If they're sad, 
talk to them. Lots of young children are committing suicide because of social media. Some are even filming the suicide on social media. If you have a child that has addiction problem, tramadol, codeine, weed, talk to them. That can impair them. Prevent your children from using drugs. Educate them. If you have people in your family who have been through deaths in the family, attacks, kidnappers, all that, get them to the psychiatrist psychotherapist and psychologist, not church deliverance, not church. Go and see a medical professional. Right, I, am on, I am on social media. I'm a pharmacist. If you need to know about the All right. Drugs, Thank you very much, Kevin. I we do appreciate you coming in this morning to tell us about this issue of post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of people are going through it. And it's, that, that's not the only disorder for, for the mental issues illness. of mental illness. Yeah. There's depression. There's anxiety. Yeah, anxiety. There's so many other po suicidal other, thoughts, suicidal thoughts yeah. and all that. So we definitely appeal to people out there get professional help. I think that's pretty much in a nutshell what Kemi Luna is trying to tell us here. Mm. She's going through it, she's seeking help. You out there, pay attention, seek help uh, also. And, and then this lady Priscilla was here last week, she's doing a talk today, mm. right, and you know, it's free, this session is free. So take right. a, avail yourself of all these opportunities. Advantage of it, okay. yeah. so. Let's go on a break now, when we come back, we'll talk to one of the women doing amazing things. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So she's a philanthropist and an entrepreneur. She was the CEO of the former Body Enhancement, Enhancement Limited, which pioneered cosmetic surgery back in 20, 2001. In 2003, she founded the non-profit organization called Empower 54, mm. which offers humanitarian programs to underprivileged women and refugees. She has received so many international awards and recognitions. She's also featured, uh, she was also featured actually twice for her entrepreneurial achievements as a leading African female boss, and also as one of the 50 top women changing Africa. Welcome with us, Princess Mudukwe Ozola. Please give her a resounding welcome. Woo! 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 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. We're very excited about having you because we know the kind of work you're doing out there. I mean, you're, you, you're, you've come a long way from cosmetic enhancement to charity work. Could you just tell us how you made that bridge and how you, how you made that conversion from going into co going cosmetics in the first place and then now you do a lot of charity work, especially in the Northeast? Yes. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. We, Body Enhancement became a household name in 2001, which meant my doors were open to every and anybody that needed cosmetic and reconstructive surgery, but they were paying clients. What uh, happened was a man came to my office with his wife. She had burns and lacerations. And they were telling me that they had gone to so many people seeking assistance, financial assistance, to do free surgery for her. But no one was helping. And I couldn't understand that because it was obvious this lady had serious deformities. Mm. And the man looked at me and he said, Madam, why don't you help us? When you speak, people would listen. Mm. And I swear, I just looked at him. He left my office, I picked up my phone, I called my plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I said, okay, I'm starting a nonprofit. I'm gonna do free surgeries for underprivileged people. That's it. He's like, okay. And that's how it started in 2003. Wow. And it's mm -hmm. been 15 years now. Beautiful. Well done. I met you for the very first time, not one-on-one um, -on -one, in 2005, when you were one of the pre-judges for Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria. And I was one of the <laughs> contestants. And then I remember that when you came, uh, everybody was whispering, the boobs lady, the boobs lady, the boobs lady, because you were famous at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back at your life, you started work, working at 18 while you were in college at McDonald's. Yeah. Now let me paint that picture quickly here. It's like the uh, daughter Briggs. of 
um, Amber, our princess, daughter of Amber, the, the, the governor, you know, working in Mr. Bix. That was oh. how that was. <laughs> you don't do at 18. It's hold a on, lifetime Nima. honor. No, Nima, hold a on. princess, you okay, a royalty, okay, working at McDonald's. Simple, Ma working at Mr. Oh, Bix. Let's come yeah, down yeah. here, okay, okay, yeah. you know, very, very small. So, okay. <laughs> swear to words, <laughs> all right. So, and um, it was, you know, enlightening for me seeing that. You had everything. You were a princess. You had the money. But then you decided to work because you've always been independent. What can you say to the youths of today that do no, no longer believe in the dignity of labor? Mm -hmm. It was a personal decision to work, even at McDonald's. When my parents sent me to school in America, I was 17. So I have been on my own literally since I was 17 years old. And the conception, uh, my family, aunties, and everybody said, oh, you're sending Modupe. Oh, she's too happy to go lucky. That one is just, she's not going to survive. <laughs> so I was like, oh, really? OK. So even when it got to the point that when it was time to go to school, I said, no, my parents shouldn't send me money. I was going to prove myself. Mm. And of course, I was so young. What skills did I have to go anywhere? And even because we always went on holidays abroad anyway, and I have cousins that would go on holiday to America and work at McDonald's. And I thought it was so amazing. I was like, really? <laughs> really? So of course, with no skills, no nothing, That's the major job that was the first job. And just like any other youth in America or any teenager, your first job is McDonald's, right. yeah. of course. And it taught me a lot. It taught me discipline, mm -hmm. which today is applied to everything I do. Right. I learned the dignity that, you know what, I can work from morning till night. That's why till today I can stand on my feet and work from <laughs> 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. Let me, and come, I even let me come to that one, Dukwe, because mm -hmm. a lot of people see you and automatically they always just remember the cosmetic part. Mm. But you're doing so much work in the Northeast. I want you to talk us, to us a bit about that because I know you were able to find 1,500 children, um, you were able to rehabilitate them. Um, tell us about that story. You took them from Bama to Maiduguri. Mm -hmm. Give, let people understand that this is not just about you as a person, it's the work you're doing. I want you to tell our viewers what you've done so far on that, on that arm. Well, Empower 54 has been in existence for about 15 years. Initially, it was called Beers Foundation. Okay. When we got involved in the IDP programs, that was in 2014, and we have done work uh, in Adamawa, Gombe, Bornu states, from rebuilding schools destroyed by Boko Haram to empowering women <coughs> based on skills. <coughs> Coincidentally, we accompanied the deputy governor of Borno State to Bama at that 24, I mean, this was a couple of years ago. Bama was not accessible at that time. Right. If the military didn't take you, you couldn't get there because right. Boko Haram still attacked the road and all of those things, and it was a very secure route. By chance, we saw, we came across children who were severely malnourished, and with uh, going into serious planning with the state government and the military, I actually led the delegation to evacuate those malnourished wow. children from Bama. So I That's led the great. team. <laughs> Thank you. And Bama is just uh, two kilometers from Sambisa Forest and all of those bits. So within a span of two days, we evacuated about 1,800 malnourished children and their family members. And the reason why they were malnourished because they had just been rescued from Sambisa. So it wasn't as though they were not giving them camps, yeah. food in adequate camps. So I was saying that um, looking at you, I mean, it's just so easy to look at you and come up with, oh, she's beautiful, you know, her skin is Princess. so, yeah, she yes, aged skin like penny. butter. But then, Don't you know, <laughs> then going through your profile and reading about you and seeing what you do, it's just so, you know, sup surprising. Why do you care? I mean, I met you earlier this morning. I shook your hand. You have a firm handshake. You know, that's already strong. like, for me, this is a, a sign of a strong person. Why do you care? You've never been... I, I don't what? think you grew up in poverty, you know, you didn't see that. You went abroad for your holidays, and then you care about kids in the Northeast. Mm. Why? Because we're supposed to care. Mm. All of us. As a human. That's why we're here. Yes. And we have different callings. You all have your callings. You, your, your calling in life, uh, be it through your profession as for now, because you don't know what you, you right. know, evolve to tomorrow. You're educating <coughs> the public and things like that. For me, when I started doing charity in 2013, I mean, uh, 2003, I realized that my life changed. For me, my purpose is to help. 
Right. Mm. I can't, I put my money into Bagan. programs. Um, sometimes I spend at least, I finance about 90% of our charity programs. Wow. Oh my God. And you can't tell me to stop. I don't know how to, even if I wanted to. I'd like to talk about the, your personality because every public person in Nigeria that we thought mattered, thought twice before they moved into Sam, um, any, anything close to Sambisa. I can say <laughs> 1,000 kilometers close to Bono State entirely. Mm -hmm. People would think twice about it. What is it about your background that gave you that courage, that built you to the, that person that, you know, you could dare anything to help people, to go anywhere to help people? What was it that built you? I want to understand your background. Something must have happened, maybe your mom or the way you were raised, something must have made you that bold or, or courageous. I'm glad you used the word bold because I used to get into trouble for being too bold as a child. <laughs> I've always been referred to as fearless and bold. Even if we did naughty things that would get punished, I wouldn't lie, but like, yes, I did it. Because as far as I was concerned, if I had the nerve to do it, I have the nerve to fess up to it. it. Yeah. And my parents always encouraged me to be me. And if I do decide I'm going to embark on a project, I am going to deliver. Yesterday, we spoke to somebody who is doing so much work. She was a guest on our show. She's doing so much work in, um, helping to accommodate children living with cerebral, cerebral palsy. And one of the highlights of the conversation yesterday was the fact that she wasn't getting a lot of help. She was just managing by herself. Mm. And, I, and I, I mentioned the fact that philanthropists across the world, in, in the West, always look for these opportunities to support people. Now, you're a Nigerian. You're one of those who are somewhat privileged and have the opportunity to do this. How do you get other people within your social circle to get involved in these kind of things? Because a lot, the, the people need help. That, that woman that I was saying, our guest yesterday, she's the one, she's funding this thing by herself, the Cerebral Palsy Center. So what are you doing? Can you just enlighten us a bit on how do we have Nigerians who truly care like you do? Yes, there are many. Mm. But many people don't know how to get engaged. Oh. And depending on the programs, uh, it's not everyone that can go on the field. I love field work. My thing is field work. Right. Okay, fine, I'm dressed like this, but mm. <laughs> I'm jeans, t-shirt, baseball right, cap, yeah. jumping from speed boats and gun boats. Right. That's my thing. That's my high. Not everybody can do that. It's not everyone that can see deformed children and, and, feel. and be okay. Mm. But that is also okay that you are not okay with that. Just being at home, maybe social media saying, look, support this organization, that is already helping. Telling your friends, okay, you know what, why don't we put some clothes together and donate? You're helping put clothes on some people. So there are many ways people can get engagement. Everybody seems to think it's always about cash. Look, we all need cash. <laughs> we all have our responsibilities. Right. You know True. what I mean? Yeah. So when you say donate to help one child in uh, Bono, you're like, ah, the people in my village, they're looking for food too. Yeah. I know how many family members are calling, you know? Let's so go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with our guests. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Stay with us. Did you had a question? Yeah. So I saw uh, one of the videos uh, when you went to evacuate the children from Bama, and uh, those kids were so frail. Mm -hmm. Frail looking, like almost skeletal. Mm -hmm. And you were crying. One of the, I, I cried yesterday because I didn't even know the extent of, we, you know, we hear these stories and we don't see. But you mentioned to the uh, mother of one of the children that she should thank the governor that he was actually the one who made it possible for mm -hmm. you to be there. So how were you able to get the government mm -hmm. to collaborate? Mm -hmm. Because you know, we hear the That's government is not doing anything. Government is trying to think, oh, everybody's bickering, but you were able to get the government involved and they helped you get those children out. How did you uh, get them? And right. what do you think they can do more to help people in the IDP? Well, for one thing, my nutrition at this point is not an, just an IDP issue. It's a national epidemic. According to the Minister of Health, one in every three Nigerian, Nigerian child, child has malnutrition. Mm -hmm. So it's all over the country. It's not, I just came back from Edo State and in my own state, I saw loads of malnourished children. It's all over the place. But uh, of course, the, the Bama incident was very unique because they had just been rescued from Sambisa. Okay. And uh, the, I was there at the invitation of the governor. 
And like I said, uh, at that time, Bama was not accessible without full support and access given either by the governor or by the military. Mm -hmm. So the evacuation was done in full partnership with the governor, uh, the state government, some of the commissioners even accompanied us. Mm -hmm. And we used uh, a total of 25 of those big US yellow school buses wow. to evacuate. Wow. And the governor gave us a facility to use, which was this brand new estate for, he had built for some doctors mm -hmm. and we kept the children there. Um, I know your charity work goes beyond Nigeria. You recently just got from Congo. Could you tell us about that? Yes, I returned last week from uh, Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. We have different programs going on there. Uh, my last trip was the distribution of albendazole and vitamin A to 620,000 children. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's right. <laughs> 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 so, the pictures. So, you can see some of the pictures. Right. So, yes. uh, that actually was even a dose because we have the same program going on in Nigeria right now. Mm. Uh, we just, uh, last month, uh, we, within three weeks, we gave out medication, the same thing, albendazole and vitamin A. Mm -hmm which is in partnership with one of our partners, Vitamin Angels, to 15,000 women and children. Actually, uh, we give them prenatal vitamins also for the pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So we have for Edo State 270,000, for 270,000 women and children. Uh, but within three weeks, we give to 15,000. So that was the first phase. The second phase will be early next year. Uh, we have the same commodities for several states within Nigeria, which is all free. We give wow. them out. Uh, for Congo, the commodities had been there for a minute, so I had to go because you know they have the elections coming up right now. There's a lot going on there. Okay, so you have this the, um, what you call ready-to-use therapeutic foods. So what is it? Did you sit down with a group of scientists to come up? With, you know what is it and how does it help um, uh, oh, nourish so children? Uh, you know in these camps and all over the suffering malnutrition. That came about after the evacuation from Bama because we realized that we had to do more. It's not just going into volatile, dangerous places we to evacuate. Yes, solutions. What, what are the, the solutions? How do we do with this? And the RUTF is ready to use therapeutic foods. It's, it's proven to save lives. Within weeks, the child will transform completely. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's very expensive. We don't have that kind of funding for it. So we decided to go ahead and see how we could come up with an alternative. Okay. Fortunately, and Profit to Four is also a U.S. nonprofit, mm -hmm. although we're registered here in Nigeria and other countries we work in. And one of the partners that we have is uh, one of the manufacturers of our UTF that UNICEF buys from. Mm -hmm. And I met by chance, met the, the owner, and he's like, yeah, we'll help you. We'll set it up for you. It's okay. Whoa. I'm telling you, um, you know, God knows the way he brings everything. everything he sure brings, mm -hmm. he brings it on. And uh, so we've set up a small factory here in Nigeria. So it's lo locally produced. Mm -hmm. And the plan is with donations, we give them out for free all across the country. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Do you have any future plans to continue charity work in such areas? Because, you know, bonds, bonds victims, victims are, you know, everywhere. You know, know, actually, that program was under the charity arm. So it wasn't body enhancement. Okay. So uh, we, we do, we still do medical missions. So that's still part of the programs we do. But we've expanded because my patron, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, said, look, we need to do more than surgeries. There are so, people that need help beyond surgeries. So we have the women empowerment programs. We have health programs such as medical missions, uh, distribution of medication, things within the health space. Mm -hmm. um, also educational, we give out, uh, we rebuild schools, give out learning materials and things like that. So we're oh, still wow. with Fantastic. Things. Unfortunately, like we have to Fantastic. round up, but we know today's your birthday. Yes. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you look Thank all you. nice and dressed up beautifully. So what are you planning you. to do today? I'm going back to my hotel to sleep. Ah, no celebrations. No celebrations? Oh. Yes, Right. Oh, 
<laughs> you get it. I so have in the last four days, I've barely slept more than three hours, so wow. I need to sleep. Rest but again, I, I did have a little celebration with some friends last night, so. Uh -huh. This is a nice mm -hmm. Pre-birthday celebration. Yes. Yes. That's Fantastic. Cool. So we, we, we <laughs> plan every time to always celebrate women who are doing great things, and that's one of the reasons why we brought you here, because we admire what you're doing. People need to see beyond the face, beyond the physical. Mm. People need to come out, especially if you're a known face. It's important for you to do things so people recognize that things are being done. And you saw a need, you made yourself available. You're a More princess for heaven's sakes. And you've been able to do that. We applaud you. Thank you so much Thank for you. repping us very well. Fulfilling yeah. your purpose. Thank Fulfilling Thank your you. purpose. All right. you. Let's give her a good round of applause. Thank you. So we have somebody in our audience, Mrs. Odufua, Remy Odufua. She brought gifts for all members of the audience. Woo! Thank you, Mrs. Odufua. She always does this. Thank you so much.